الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا أبو القاسم المصطفى الأمين وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعن صلى على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين يا رب العالمين Dear respected viewers of the Imam Hussein TV channel number 3 network I would like to send my condolences to you all upon what is definitely a tragic, sad commemoration that those of you who adhere to the Shia understanding of Islam, which of course is the Islam revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and was espoused, taught and detailed by him, his holy daughter Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, her husband Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam and indeed the 11 Imams from the progeny of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Of course for those of you who are not aware of what this sad, auspicious, delicate and indeed tragic period we are commemorating, we are commemorating the period known as Fatimiyyah named Fatami, of course, after Our Lady, the wife of Imam Ali and the daughter of the Holy Prophet himself, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam is someone who indeed every single Muslim, regardless of which sect they come from, be they Zaydiyya, be they Ismailiya, be they Ifn Ashari, be they Sunni, be they even Ibavi, would recognize and hold with a degree of the utmost respect, for she is the daughter of the Prophet. And so, what we find at this period of the year is that we find ourselves, we as the Shia individuals, find ourselves in a slight dilemma. We find ourselves in what we could consider a form of cognitive dissonance. We begin to ask ourselves, should we really be commemorating? Should we be publicly observing the martyrdom of Fatima to Zahra, given that the details of this martyrdom are so controversially provocative that if our friends who follow non-Shia schools of thought in Islam were to hear what we believe about this period of time, they may indeed consider us to be vile, disrespectful and deficient Muslims. So tonight, before we proceed into discussing some of the major doubts, facts and misconceptions about the period of time known as Fatimiyya, or to be more precise, the martyrdom of Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, I would like to discuss something far more crucial. I would like to launch straight away into a preliminary discussion in regards to how we as Shia and in indeed in regards to how our non-Shia compatriots, friends, colleagues and family members are to engage 
with a double bind of trying to be respectful on the one hand to our co-religionists and those who follow different schools of thoughts, but whilst on the other hand maintaining a degree of respect, veneration and allegiance to the holy household, the family of the Prophet and acting in a way which is not only befitting of our allegiance to them, but most importantly would take into consideration the way that they would want us to behave. When we look at this topic, when we look at any topic of history, there are some today who would argue, why should I be concerned with something that happened so vastly distant from my own time and in a past, and in a past which is to a certain degree impossible to reconstruct. We would have those who come forward and say that, look, that's the past, I can't be certain of it. But what I can be certain about is that there's a present, and in that present I have people, I have friends, I have colleagues, I have people around me who I respect, who at the end of the day may respect some of the figures who are involved in the martyrdom of Fatima the Zahra. And so they would come forward and they would ask the question, why, on what basis, with what rational justification can I come forward and now start saying that, look, this figure that you respect, O oh my beloved friend from the Ahl Sunnah, we believe that he killed and took part in a violent assault upon someone so cherishedly beloved to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, when one phrases it like that, it's easy to understand that side of the argument. So the side of the argument would say that, look, there is a difference of opinion on this individual, you as Shias believe a certain thing, Sunnis believe a different thing, and therefore, in order not to offend your living Sunni friends, you shouldn't engage in this topic whatsoever. But then you have the other side of the argument, which states what? It states that the whole religion, this entire religion of Islam, as is understood and read and taught, articulated by, the Holy Prophet and indeed the Ahl al-Bayt. It states what? It states that as one of the ten Faru al-Din, one of the ten branches of religion we are to believe in, I want to focus on the more important one today. Tawala. Tawalla. Which is where one believes that we are to outwardly display our allegiance to the Holy Household. Now, of course, this level of wilaya is not merely something found in venerations. Although when I say it is found in venerations, it's found in venerations of both sects. For certain, we, we find that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he states in an agreed upon mutawatir narration, a narration which is beyond any reasonable shadow of doubt, that I leave behind two weighty things, the Book of Allah and my Ahlul Bayt, my progeny, my Ahlul Bayt. And then he says, what? He says, and these two shall never separate until they reach me at the lake font. According to certain narrations, he goes on to state, وَذَكِّرَكُمَ Allah fi أَهْلِ بَيْتِ وَذَكِّرَكُمَ Allah fi أَهْلِ بَيْتِ I remind you by Allah in regards to my Ahlul Bayt. This is merely one of the narrations. Now, of course, there's no dispute that Fatima al Zahra is from the Ahlul Bayt. There's no dispute about that whatsoever. On another level, 
if one were to cast doubt upon what can be inferred from that narration alone, then we have another famous narration, one which is recounted in Fath al-Bari, fi sharhi Sahih al-Bukhari, of Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, where the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has stated, Fatima bid'atun minni. Fatima is a part of me. And he goes on to state, whoever angers her angers me. And of course we know from other narrations that whoever angers Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has angered Allah So we see that on that level, this level of tawalla towards Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam is indeed part of Islam. But for those who deny, for those who are in doubt about the narrations and whether or not these narrations are authentic, we find that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi the Holy Prophet in the Quran is quoted by Allah as having said when Allah commands him to state Qul, la as'alukum ajra. I do not ask you for any reward illa muwaddata fil qurba except muwadda fil qurba Mawadda, of course, is the highest level of love which is reciprocal between any two beings. Allah Azzawajal states that He has placed Mawadda between a husband and wife. Allah Azzawajal states that the Jews, uh, sorry, that the Christians and the Muslims should have Mawadda between them. This is the highest form of love, hence why Allah's name is what? Al Wadud, from one of Allah Azzawajal's names. And this name means the ultimately loving. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala asks us for al-mawaddatun fil qurba, we understand from this that the only reward, the only recompense that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala has to ask from the mu'mineen for delivering this message of salvation that will bring them to the heavens is that we show Muwadda fil qurba fi qurba al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala. In regards to the close family members of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala. Now this is the only thing demanded for by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala. You can understand why what was once a major dilemma Namely, how do I not offend my friends? Now, doesn't seem like so much of a shubha. It doesn't seem like so much of an argument. The argument would of course state that, look, if, and it's a big if, it can be proven that a certain group of individuals took part in the harming, the oppressing, and indeed especially the martyrdom of Fatima Zahra alayhi salatu wasalam, the daughter of a prophet, the one who he referred to, referred to as himself, then regardless of whether or not such individuals have a support base amongst people who are my colleagues and friends today, I have a responsibility, a duty, to go around articulating the truth on this matter, on this crucial issue, in order that it would not be forgotten and in order that the voice of the oppressed would continue to be uttered and continue to be respected and commemorated in a world in which the oppressed are forgotten overnight. And particularly if that oppression is one foretold by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now we can see both sides of the argument. But the real question that needs to be asked, the real, real issue that needs to be asked is, is 
the perpetuation, the constant repeating, the constant reminder about the Fatimiri, about the Fatimiyya periods, is this a demonstration, articulation, and reiteration of what we could call hate speech? There are some who might indeed view the entire system of commemorating Fatimiyya a form of hate speech. Allow us to say this. Such things are not hate speech. For indeed, we did not wake up overnight and choose to randomly defame a group of people without evidence, without any justification, without any rational vindication for our choice of this topic. Indeed, I would like to reiterate to my viewers, I would like to reiterate to everyone who is presently watching this episode, that no matter what you have been told, no matter which emotional discharge you need to let away from yourselves as a result of hearing of this commemoration, you must know that as a representative of the Ahlul Bayt, there is a certain haba, there is a certain weight and authority which the martyrdoms of the Ahlul Bayt must be afforded. It is not befitting of the Shia of the Ahlul Bayt to go around in this cheap, crude, disgusting manner, joking about the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. For indeed, whilst many of you may be shocked by this statement, and whilst many of you may see certain people who are referred to as ulama, encouraging this cheap belittling and insulting grotesque behavior, a language which allows the most foul words to emanate from the human tongue in regards to the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. Then know, oh my brothers and sisters, that if your parents were murdered, if your family members were murdered, if anyone in your family were massacred, you would not find it befitting for people to take the names of the killers of your family members in this grotesque, belittling, humorous manner, joke about them in a way in which certain tendencies of a humorous and very immature high school-esque nature are mentioned, and all haber, all authority and all weight is removed from the discussion. No, that's not how we wish to deal with the issue of Fatimiyya. We're not here to rub salt further into any wounds. I'm not here with the purpose of grotesquely insulting, offending, or even trying to irritate anyone who follows the individuals who I believe categorically took part in the attack on Fatima to Zahra's house, which I ultimately believe led to the martyrdom of herself and her unborn infant. Rather, in the next few episodes, my sole intention is to establish the following things. Number one, how history was constructed and how we as human beings are to deal with historical analysis. Number two, who is Fatima Zahra alayhi salam? Who is the daughter of a prophet according to a wider universal Muslim understanding? There's no benefit in me merely preaching to the choir. I know that we as Shias have elevated Fatima to Zahra alayhi salatu wasalam, and when I say elevated, I mean we have viewed her from an elevated rank. But that elevated rank is nonetheless of a natural rank which she deserves. And so I intend to, throughout these episodes, look at the rank of Fatima to Zahra in the collective 
turaf or textual heritage of the Muslims. In addition to that, I plan to look sensitively at the issue of the inter-Shi'i discussion as to how Fatima al-Zahra was martyred. And finally, I wish to offer a word of advice in analysis of what the furthest we can demonstrate in a rational discussion with our brothers from other sects might be in regards to the martyrdom of Fatima al-Zahra. Of course, I have stated, I honestly want to keep this discussion as academic as possible. You won't be hearing me curse anyone. You won't be hearing me insult anyone. Inshallah ta'ala, what you'll be hearing in these next few episodes is something kept as academic as possible, given the whole nature of such a discussion. I aim to deal with this topic in the same way that I would want anyone else to deal with an historical investigation into the religion of Islam. We ought to engage with figures venerated by others in a way which we would hope that others would look into our respected figures. I have no one, I have, sorry, I have no qualms, no issues, and indeed no problems with someone choosing to put forward several questions of an academic nature towards the people who I respect. The entire problem I might have is when someone chooses to be grotesquely insulting, when someone chooses to inconsistently look at certain figures in a way that they wouldn't apply the criticism to others. You see, it is only through understanding and empathizing with others that we might be able to guide them slightly. And it's only through taking your hat off for a few moments and acknowledging that I, as an individual, was in need of guidance. Ahlul Bayt salam, have brought me to where I need to be. Ahlul Bayt are still guiding me, but at least they've put me on the path of the Ahlul Bayt. And now what I need to do is I need to likewise thank the Ahlul Bayt for bringing me where I am. There's no point of me being arrogant. Arrogance isn't going to help you. Rather, when it comes to Fatima, know that were it not for the grace of Allah Azza were it not for His Lutf, you very well may have been like the vast majority of Muslims in the world today, kept in the dark, uncertain, and completely unfamiliar with the fine details of early Islamic history. Thank Allah Azza wa Jal that you have been given the opportunity to live in a world where everything is now out in the open. That these topics can be discussed and of course we can discuss them academically. There is no need to bring up the threat of the sword of a torch to burn down the abode in which you live in. Rather, alhamdulillah, we are living in an era in which everything is now subject to investigation. I thank you all for tuning into this show once more, and I pray that you would continue to join me whilst we embark upon this historical investigation. I thank you once more and may Allah Azza wa Jal accept this small effort. And I pray that you would all forgive any shortcomings, inshallah ta'ala. Have a wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ahl bayta tayyibin al-tahirin wa la'natullah ala abdahim ajma'in. Oh,